Well, good evening, Solid Rock Nation. It is a blessing for us to be able to have Bible study night again and to study and get into the word of God and hear what the scriptures has to say to the church and to us, the people. Uh, tonight, I just want to ask you to be in prayer for our families who are going through loss and our families uh, who are experiencing uh, having to deal with this COVID-19 disease and how is it affect how it is affecting us and our families and those that we love and those that we are around. Uh, but tonight I want to talk about a word called hope, uh, hope, hope. Uh, this word hope. Uh, I want to talk more about uh, the desire for something more. I want to talk a little bit about anticipating better things in the future. I want to talk a little bit about expecting uh, your life to get better. You've got to have hope. Uh, we're going to talk about hope through the framework of the Word of God, which is uh, the Bible. And we're going to try to do that through the eyes of uh, an anonymous woman found in the Bible in a very familiar story uh, that you've heard over and over and over again. And just for uh, the context of what we're teaching tonight, I want to use the scripture in Mark chapter 5, verse 24 through 34. Um, if you will. So just go along with me. Let us pray. God, we thank you now for this Bible study tonight. We thank you for every person that's tuned in, everyone that's pulled out their word and their pen, paper, and Bibles uh, to hear a word from you. Pray now, Lord, that you would just speak to us, Lord. Share the word with us. Encourage us, Lord, to know that you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We praise and bless your name. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Um, um, Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse number 24 down through verse number 34. A lot to read, but you know the story. But in case um, somebody does not, I um, uh, just want to read it just for everybody's hearing. And Jesus went with them, and much people followed him and thronged him. Verse 25, and a certain woman which had, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but gra rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. And straightway, Verse 29, the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said, see thou the multitude throng indeed, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Somebody ought to say amen. And he said unto her daughter, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let's talk a little bit about this woman. Uh, it seems that she was in a very hopeless situation. Verse 25 tells us that, that she was suffering. She had been bleeding for 12 years now. She had this bleeding disease. And verse 26 gives us even more details of her suffering. Said she had went to all the doctors she could find, and the doctors had just added to her suffering. Uh, she had spent every dime she had to try to find some relief. And uh, she was broke, and now she was worse than she had ever been before. Uh, see, it seems that her situation was totally hopeless, y'all. Um, anybody out there ever felt like you were in a hopeless situation? Ever felt like, you know, you were going through and instead of it getting better, it appears to be getting worse? Uh, maybe you're in a situation like this woman. Maybe you're hopeless about your medical problems. You keep going to the doctor and you keep uh, giving, getting new medications and they keep doing new diagnoses and it doesn't seem to get any better. Maybe you're hopeless about your job or your business, you know. It looks like, you know, uh, with the economy being where it is and us being in a pandemic, 
Uh, you can't open your business. You can't go to your jobs. And all these things seem to make you feel like you're hopeless. Maybe somebody out there this evening is hopeless about your family. You've done all you can to protect them from COVID. You've done all you can to provide for them. And now it seems like you're not able to do anything because there's no cure uh, for COVID-19. There's no cure and you can't work. You're not making the money that you need. So you can't support your family like you want to. And, you know, and, and, and maybe there's somebody out there that's, that, you know, maybe it's just life. It seems like every time I take a step forward, I fall back two, three steps. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, life, you know, makes you feel like it's got you and nothing you can do about it. Does everything about your life seem hopeless? Well, I just want to encourage you, uh, hang on. We're going to get to the rest of the story. There is hope. Uh, uh, there, don't, don't, don't give up just yet. But first, this woman had one more obstacle to get through. She, she, she knew she wanted to get to Jesus. She knew she had all these issues. And I heard the preacher say last week, we all have issues, but how do we deal with them? Uh, we have a hope in God. And so this woman had another obstacle that was in front of her. It's called the crowd. Now, you know the crowd, the crowd. Matter of fact, in this story is mentioned five times, and I, I want us to get this, and you know, catch this. The crowd was a problem for the woman. Uh, the crowd knew this woman. Uh, she probably had been shunned by the crowd. The crowd, you know, didn't want her to be around because according to the law, she was unclean and an outcast. And uh, uh, I, I think that, you know, because she was unclean, she had to stay away from folk, and nobody was to have contact with this woman. And the crowd would look down on her like the crowd in, around today will sometimes look down on us. You know, uh, the crowd uh, maybe just didn't, hadn't even noticed her. Some, you know, sometimes people won't notice you because they're too busy trying to get something for themselves, you know. But also, I want us to notice here that the crowd also included the disciples. Even the followers of Christ stood between this woman and Jesus. Um, maybe your obstacles are like that of this woman. Maybe they're something totally different from this woman, but whatever your obstacles might be, you just got to hold on because Jesus is on the way. I want to talk to the crowd for just a minute. Uh, the crowd, there are a lot of hopeless people around us every day. There are probably a lot of hopeless people uh, listening to the sound of my voice tonight. There are probably a, hopeless, a lot of hopeless people who uh, may not even know uh, about God in our communities, uh, probably full of hopeless people. But I, I like to say to all of them and, and to all of you, I want to urge you to just hold on. Despite the crowd and her pain, the woman had one push left for hope. She had tried all she could, and I'm sure that she was thinking there was nothing else. But the Bible says in verse 27 that she had heard about Jesus. I wish I had some help in here. Is there anybody? Here that just need to know that have you heard about Jesus? Uh, in 28, verse 28 tells us about her thought. She heard what Jesus was doing and how he was healing and all the things he was doing. And verse 28 says, if I could just touch his garment, I'll be made well. Listen here. So what does she do? She has to push through the crowd. Her hope, her hope was in Jesus. And she wasn't about to let this last chance slip by. I came by here to tell somebody that might be hopeless. I want to give you one more hope. His name is Jesus. And maybe you got to push through the crowd. Don't listen to him. Don't pay attention to him. Don't let this last chance pass you by. There's one other very important figure here in the story other than the crowd, and that's Jesus. This woman's last hope was Jesus. He was right there, almost in touching range. But the crowd was between the woman and her healing between the woman and her hope. And this woman, the Bible says, had suffered for 12 years. She had lost everything. She was down to nothing. Uh, but what did she find? In verse number 34, it says, and, and Jesus said unto her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. What did she find in Jesus? She found a savior. Not only did she find a savior, she found healing. She not only found healing and, faith and, and a savior, 
she found faith. And the Bible says in 34, she even found peace. All of this was found in Jesus. I need to tell somebody, put your faith in Jesus. Put your hope in Jesus, and he'll be a savior. He'll heal your body. He'll give you faith, and he'll give you peace that surpass all understanding. Does your soul need healing? You can find it in Jesus' solid rock nation. Push through the crowd. Push past your medical problems. Push through your job problems. Push through your family problems. Push through the pandemic. Push through all that we're going through in this season. Push through to Jesus, and you can find hope. This woman found all of that in Jesus, and I need to tell you, if he did it for her, he'll also do it for you. And I want to encourage you also now to go with me to another scripture, just a little further over in the book of Mark, found in Mark chapter 16, I want to read verses 9 through 11, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. I want to encourage somebody. The Bible says, uh, now when Jesus was on Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 11, uh, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And when she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept, and when they, when they heard that he was alive and had been with her, believed not. Truth of the matter is, Solid Rock Nation, they had lost hope. But contrast that with John chapter 20, verses 19 and 20, which reads thusly, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Verse 20 says, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Hope. They lost hope, but they regained their hope. Um, Mr. Uh, Wagner, who helped compile the Funk and Wagner Dictionary, was asked a question. What's the saddest words in the English language? He had put all these words in a dictionary. And his answer was, unloved, lonely and hopeless. If I've ever seen a picture of our world today, it is this. It is unloved, it is lonely, and it appears to be hopeless. Countless thousands and millions of lives today are without hope. Uh, folk have just given up. Little children, young people, wives, husbands, families, churches, communities, cities, countries, Politician, people are shaking their heads, shrugging their shoulders, and giving up on the state of hope in a, in a state of hopelessness. Today, you may not see a lot of people mourning and weeping on the outside, but I stopped by here to, to, to tell somebody the truth of the matter is multitudes are mourning and weeping on the inside. Some some of you are that are listening to me right now are mourning and weeping on the inside. Why? because of this state of hopelessness. Have you lost hope today? Did you ever have hope? Well, the disciples, let me tell you if, you, if you feel hopeless, you can be in good company. The disciples were without hope. Uh, the disciples who, 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 who followed Jesus in the days of his flesh had some wonderful advantages. They examine the, the thinking of the disciples as to why they followed Jesus. Listen, they, they, they were there. Uh, uh, they, they weren't disappointed in following Jesus. They, they heard things they had never dreamed they would hear. They saw things they never dreamed they would see. Uh, they saw the five thousand, the thousands fed. Uh, they saw the blind to see. They, they saw the crippled walk. They saw the sick be made well. They saw the dead be raised. They saw broken lives put together. They saw him speak to the wind and the waves and say, peace be still, and it would calm down. They were not disappointed by following Jesus, but how in the world could they be hopeless? They were excited about following Jesus, but all of a sudden, the Bible teaches that it changed. Listen, y'all. How did it change, preacher? Judas betrayed Jesus. Jesus had to pray alone in the garden. The soldiers came and arrested him. Let me tell you the story in a, in a, in a short version. Uh, he went before the Sanhedrin and he was tried in a kangaroo court. He went before Pilate and he was tried and condemned to death. The, the, Y'all you know, know the story. The crowd hollered, crucify him, crucify him. 
We don't want this man to reign over, over us. Then they led him up Golgotha's hill and crucified him. Somebody need to know that he died. Is that right? Then they wrapped him in a linen cloth and laid him in a borrowed tomb and sealed the door. Now what happened to the disciples when Jesus was laid in the tomb? Uh, the Bible says in verse number 10 of, John, of, of Mark 16, it says that they were mourning and weeping. And why were the disciples mourning and weeping, preacher? They had lost all hope. Their hope had been sealed in a borrowed tomb. Their hope had been crucified. Their hope had died with Jesus. They didn't have one shred of hope left. I might be talking to somebody who might be in the same position that the disciples were in, and it appears that you don't have one shred of hope left. Everything you've attempted to do, everything you've gone out to do, everything you've set out to do, uh, they had lost hope. They were discouraged. Are you despondent? Are you depressed? And are you desperate? But I, I'm so glad I stopped by here tonight to tell somebody that the story doesn't end there. I know you're going through, but aren't you glad that the story doesn't end there? As a matter of fact, the tomb could not keep him. The Bible teaches us that he rose. Hallelujah. Christ got up. He didn't stay dead. And the disciples' mourning turns into laughing. Their mourning turned into joy. He's not dead. Somebody ought to shout, he is risen. Is that all right? And if I didn't believe the fact today that Jesus is alive, I would have no hope at all. That's where my hope is. Uh, that's where my hope, put not your hope in man. Yes, I encourage every single one of us that early voting starts today. Get out and go vote. But don't put your hope in a Democratic Party. Don't put your hope in a Republican Party. Don't put your hope in an independent party. Don't put your hope in man. You need to put your hope in Jesus. And why would I put my hope in Jesus? Because he lives. A songwriter said I can face tomorrow because he lives. All my fears are gone. And what is the basis of our hope? The secret to our newfound hope and joy that the disciples found is found, found, is found in John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. And they said in, in the same evening, being the first day of the week, they had been mourning for a while. And when the doors were shut and he had told the disciples, uh, go tarry in the upper room, uh, you know, go tarry there. And they were up in the upper room. They were assembled together for fear the Jews might kill them. And the Bible teaches that Jesus came, didn't open the door, and stood in the midst of them. And he said unto them, y'all, he said, peace, be still. And my peace, uh, peace unto you. And when he had so said, verse 20 says, he showed, his, showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw Jesus. Then and when are the key words here. Then were the disciples glad when they saw Jesus. Listen, let's, let's analyze what verse 20 did not say. It did not say, then were the disciples glad when they saw their circumstances. That's not what it said. It didn't say, then were the disciples glad when they saw them, their selves. They, no, that's not what it said. It didn't say, uh, then were the disciples glad when they saw each other. No, it didn't say that. It didn't say, then were the disciples glad when they saw their doctrine. These, were, well, these things will steal your joy. Self, others, things, and circumstances will all steal your hope. It'll, it'll make you feel like you're hopeless. It did say, listen what it did say in verse number 20, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. What is the basis of our hope, y'all? The basis of our hope and joy is Jesus the Christ. My life is hidden in Christ, in God. The basis of our hope is in three phases of the work and the person of Christ. My hope in Christ is the living and written word of God. How does it work? You know, I, I was a lost sinner one day and the word said Jesus died for my sin. I call it hope. You know, my sins were black as midnight, but the word says, though you sin, though your sin be as scarlet, I'll wash you white as snow. I call it hope. The, then I said, Lord, I can walk this life alone. And the word says, guess what? Even though you think you can, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you till the end. I call that hope. You know, I see this world going to hell in every way. But the word says, the same Jesus will come again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Is that right? I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be 
also. Listen, I have hope because of the living presence of the Son of God in the person of the Holy Spirit. His spirit bears witness with my spirit. My, listen, y'all, the songwriter put it this way, and I kind of like it. He says, my God is real because I can feel him in my soul. I serve a risen Savior. I have hope because of experience of life. Hope maketh not a shame. Hope won't disappoint. He has never let me down. He has never let any other Christian down. The blessings of, of living in hope. Listen, if you have hope, I come by to encourage you, put your hope in Jesus. When you have hope in Jesus, you can rejoice. Romans 5 and 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, y'all, we have the love of God. Go down Romans a little bit further to Romans 5 and 5, and it reads, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, y'all. Then not only do we have uh, 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 the love of God, we also have the power of the Holy Ghost, Romans 15. 13 says, now the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We have a reason to live a purified life. Listen, y'all, all we got to do is trust God. And John, 1 John 3 and 3, and every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as the Spirit even as he is pure. I'm sorry. And I need to tell somebody, we got all these reasons to have hope. So look, don't be hopeless. Hold on. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is going to work this thing out through us, just like he did for the woman that had the issue of blood. All we got to do is get closer to him, draw nigh unto God, and watch him draw nigh unto us. Purify yourself, sanctify yourself, set apart yourself, make it your business to say, you know what? My hope is built, I wish I had somebody, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust a sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I don't know about y'all. I'm not going to put it in the presidential candidate. I'm not going to put it on in politicians. I'm not going to put it in man. But my hope is built on nothing less than the blood of Jesus and his righteousness. And I dare not trust a sweeter frame. But I promise you, if you just hold on to the name of Jesus, and at that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Solid Rock Nation, I just want to encourage you. We got hope. Our hope is in Jesus the Christ, who's soon coming. And get ready, because he's coming one day. We know not the minute nor the hour. The angels in heaven don't know, but be assured that some glad morning, when, when this life is over, I'll fly away, I'll fly away to be at rest with our Savior. Listen, stay blessed. We're going to be outside on Sunday morning uh, having service again in the parking lot. I want you to come on out, join in with us uh, as we give God praise and glory and honor and thank him for all that he's doing in all of our lives. And, you know, let's, let's come out. We're wearing pink on Sunday. It's pink Sunday for our breast cancer awareness. Uh, come on out. We're going to be celebrating with those who have the miracle of having uh, survived breast cancer. So Jesus has done some healing, and we want to give him praise and glory and just recognize the fact that he's still in the miracle working business. Solid Rock Nation, I love you guys. I hope you get encouraged by the word today of hope because God is, our hope is in Jesus. Nothing or nobody else but Jesus and Jesus alone. So Love each other, stay safe, and we'll see you on Sunday morning. Blessings, blessings, and blessings be upon you. Amen and amen.